I have spent a good many years since, too many, I think, being ashamed about what I write. I think I was 40 before I realized that almost every writer of fiction or poetry who has ever published a line has been accused by someone of wasting his or her God-given talent. If you write or paint or dance or sculpt or sing, I suppose, as a writer, one of the things that I've always been interested in doing is actually invading your comfort space. Because that's what we're supposed to do. Get under your skin and make you react. Bad writing is more than a matter of shit syntax and faulty observation. Bad writing usually arises from a stubborn refusal to tell stories about what people actually do. To face the fact, let us say, that murderers sometimes help old ladies cross the street. In many cases, when a reader puts a story aside because it got boring, the boredom arose because the writer grew enchanted with his powers of description and lost sight of his priority, which is to keep the ball rolling. I recognize terror as the finest emotion, and so I will try to terrorize the reader. But if I find that I cannot terrify, I will try to horrify, and if I find that I cannot horrify, I'll go for the gross out. I'm not proud. Like anything else that happens on its own, the act of writing is beyond currency. Money is great stuff to have, but when it comes to the act of creation, the best thing is not to think of money too much. It constipates the whole process. I think talent as a writer is hardwired in. It's all there at least the basic elements of it. You can't change it any more than you can choose whether to be right-handed or left-handed. Life cannot have had a random beginning. The trouble is that there are about 2,000 enzymes and the chance of obtaining them all in a random trial is only one part in 10 we 40,000, an outrageously small probability that could not be faced even if the whole universe consisted of organic soup. Major brands don't know what to do with happy customers. They make it hard for customers to say thanks, and way too often, companies don't celebrate and embrace customers' positive gestures. Do you want to understand how to swim, or do you want to jump in and start swimming? Only people who are afraid of the water want to understand it. Other people jump in and get wet. It's hard to deny that an alarming number of those who stood for peace, not war, were either killed by deranged lone gunmen or else died in suspicious circumstances. We refer, of course, to the likes of JFK, Martin Luther King, Benazir Bhutto, Bobby Kennedy and John Lennon, to name but a few.